so this is the final lecture of this season for uh, unification uh, schemes uh, and more importantly the end of the syllabus for high energy physics and uh, this lecture we are going to talk about uh, string theory uh, string theory is something which is uh, not very much uh, widely accepted uh, it's still in the preliminary stages a lot of things needs to be proved on an experimental basis uh, one of the most uh, famous uh, people working on this uh, field is michio kaku and uh, uh, there has always been a question of uh, support and against uh, when we talk about uh, things like uh, string theory so it has been a long discussion whether we need to include gravity or not and uh, since the time of einstein including gravity with all the other three forces in a single unified uh, field uh, has been a challenge and these kind of challenges are still on and uh, we don't have a perfect solution to this one of the ways to answer may be the string theory so a string theory usually talks about description of all the forces and matter in one mathematical picture so since we are only talking about uh, the quantitative pi uh, picture the qualitative picture not the quantitative picture we're not looking into any kind of mathematical equation but uh, the aim is finally to involve all the four forces in one mathematical equation which is getting tougher now till now if you look into the theory we know that the electro weak uh, uh, interaction consists of the electromagnetic and the weak interaction and the strong nuclear forces and all three of them combines to what we know as the grand unified theory there also there lies a lot of scope of proving something more experimental in nature but when we talk about uh, the string theory it is actually an idea a pure idea but it is considered to be one of the most uh, brilliant it's controversial at the same time and unproven ideas in all of physics so if you look into physics uh, one of the uh, uh, most uh, latest ideas is been the string theory and it has not been yet proved um, so it does lies uh, as a big challenge if you consider at the fundamental uh, level all the different forces would be the particles interaction and the manifestations of reality all are tied together as a part of the same framework so the standard model was is and will remain an attempt to, to include all the forces all the particles all the interactions in one single framework but since we know that a lot of answers are not yet been proved in the standard model we don't have the inclusion of a particle like graviton hence um, this standard model is still not the complete answer so what uh, scientists did was they realized that okay we need to include a new theory which is called the string theory uh, it is very much uh, logical because here what happens is the particles are not considered as point particles they are rather considered as a string and this is considered to be the best contender for a quantum theory of gravitation so when we talk about the grand unified forces we actually consider it under the quantum theory or more uh, specifically relativistic quantum mechanics uh, but uh, if we include uh, gravitation we can actually uh, add a term to it to gravitation so we have got a quantum theory of gravitation but then we don't have any experimental evidences so we don't have any experimental evidences here and of course there are no compelling theoretical reasons to think that it might be true so there has always been a division of ideas okay and and some people do believe in it and many scientists doesn't believe in it so if you look into the idea of uh, string theory these are nothing but uh, talking about strings so we have the fundamental particle let it be the electrons or let it be the quarks uh, these are not point like dots but rather they are strings they are so small that our best instruments cannot tell that they are not points so that means uh, if we use the best of our instruments uh, and uh, that restriction lies in the heisenberg's uncertainty principle that it is might at, at some point it might not even be the restriction because of the uh, instrument but rather maybe a reason on how the environment works or how the nature works so if we use our best of instrument we still cannot resolve it and we still see the electrons and the quarks and so on uh, as point particles whereas in fact they are might not be point particles they might be actually strings it also predicts that there are extra dimensions to space so if we come come from the einstein's uh, logic we know 
and a lot of things has been proved uh, till now that uh, we do have the three spatial dimension and one time dimension. But then string theory goes beyond this and uh, says that uh, the length, breadth and depth is something which is experienced by us in reality. Uh, but we do not experience the higher dimension because they might be bunched up in tiny spaces. So we need instruments to look into that which we do not have because of uh, numerous reasons. While these notions are very strange, the idea is quite strange and there has been books on uh, hyperspace and so on. And then uh, you can uh, have those books and you might feel that you are actually reading a sci-fi story, but at some point they might be true as well. So the key issue for the string theory has actually been the difficulty of testing these ideas. So we definitely say there are more dimensions, but what are the ways to test them? How do we know that there are more dimensions? So that has been the challenge. So as I said, universe has got three special dimension and one time dimension. But uh, for gravity to be included in these, it becomes actually a challenge and that is actually where everything comes in. Uh, that is where the string theory actually uh, helps us to actually develop a general idea which might not be widely accepted. So instead of calculating uh, how a single particle, a zero dimension entity, so basically if we consider something a zero dimensional entity, it does not extend on the x, y or z axis. So that means it is as small as possible because if you even put a point dot on, uh, on a paper, you basically have some kind of dimension. So we are not considering even that dimension, we are going far, far, far lower than that scale. So it behaves uh, in any number of dimension and maybe we can calculate how a string whether open or closed behaves. So if you look into that from that point of view where actually it looks like a string, it might be a one dimensional entity but it will behave. So that means there will be inclusion of vibration and so on. So from what we can look uh, and we can actually uh, derive an analogy here and then we can actually complete the quantum theory of gravity in more realistic number of dimensions. So if you have got more number of dimensions, it will be more uh, realistic uh, from, from the string theory point of view. So what we do is uh, we really do not work with uh, points and interactions in string theory. We start to think about surfaces now. So that means if there are strings, it is going to cover some kind of region. If you consider a one dimensional picture as well, we are talking about surfaces and not just points. So, if you consider an electron, uh, in case of string theory, it actually undergoes one vibrational pattern. So, if you look into some uh, videos on YouTube and so on, you will see that uh, there is some kind of analogy drawn when we are actually talking about a guitar string. You get the notes uh, or the sounds or the beats uh, uh, based on uh, what kind of uh, strings you are uh, strumming okay, at a particular point. Okay. So based on this, uh, the idea is basically analogous. Here we consider that the electron is undergoing one particular vibrational pattern. And if we consider something like a quark, it is imagined uh, as a string undergoing a different vibrational pattern altogether. So the vibrational pattern will determine what kind of fundamental particles we are talking about as per string theory. So crucially among the vibrational patterns, uh, the physicist thought that uh, there would be particles which would be found by experiment to communicate uh, nature's forces. So string theory was usually proposed as the sort for unification of all the forces and all matter. So we will have different kinds of vibration and even for the gravitons, okay, defining gravity, we will also have a sort of vibration which might be determined later and that will actually go into the unification theory for string theory. So please remember for our, in order to understand this, we have to go into the probabilistic uh, nature of physics. We have to talk more and more about uh, quantum mechanics. So the more exact equation also revealed the ingredients in the string theory besides strings. So if we go more into the theory of string, uh, uh, string theory, we, we basically see that there are not only strings but there are surfaces and to add on that there are also something which we call as membrane like objects and uh, they are collectively called as brains. So basically string theory deals with brains, B R A N E S that comes from membrane and that is also a something which we call as a theoretical concept. So what happens is that finally the new technique will establish that various versions of strings developed over the preceding decades were essentially all the same. So 
there were different ideas on string theory which has been developed over the last few decades and one of the theory was that it is uh, basically vibrating as a string. You might actually have seen some this kind of images and this will be of different colors. Okay. So, these are nothing but string vibrations and they will keep on vibrating. So, these are strings and now we are talking about membrane and so on. So, basically they are the same, the, the main idea remains the same. That is why when we unify all these ideas of string theory, we give them a new name which is called the M theory. So, this unification uh, is the M theory. So, M theory or string theory are very much closely connected where M theory connects all the ideas of uh, string theory. But then why exactly we need the string theory? So, string theory is if some believes and maybe someone does not even believe so, so they, they said that it may be a theory of quantum gravity. Uh, string theory of course provides a new perspective on Gauss theory. So, when we started with the uh, Maxwell's equation the Gauss theory started, uh, but then the way that Gauss theory was solved or approached uh, will be different when we talk about uh, string theory. So, it provides a new perspective and of course, string theory provides a lot of new mathematics and lot of new results uh, on mathematics. Okay. So, usually the research is not that strong in the strong field theory uh, because of a lot of reasons and because uh, uh, many does not believe in the theory and do believe that there is no such future in it. So, if you consider the same theory as a uh, theory of quantum gravity which actually talks about unifying gravity with quantum mechanics, uh, string theory actually unifies the Einstein's theory of relativity with quantum mechanics. So, that means the uh, quantum uh, relativistic quantum mechanics is still existent there but including gravity now. Moreover, it does in such a manner that retains the explicit connection with both quantum gravity and low energy description of space time. So, if you go into the higher energy field, we are talking about the grand unified theory or a slightly lower one might be the electromagnetic theory, but then electroweak theory and but then if you are considering a low energy description of the space time, we can actually include gravity into the picture. So, that means we are uh, joining in quantum theory and uh, the low energy description of space time. Now, for some uh, string theory has given uh, very impressive and compelling answers, they were able to express their ideas, but uh, for others uh, string theory has been silent that means that some of the answers could still not be obtained and as a result some of them has discarded the idea. And then this is the final slide that we have where we are talking about string theory provides a new perspective to the Gauss theory. Well, this is actually quite vast, we need to know a lot about the Gauss theories, but to keep it as brief as possible, uh, actually string theory initially was an attempt to understand the strong force. So, initially string theory started with the idea of strong force as it provides the tool which is used to analyze down to earth aspects of quantum field theory that are far removed from ideas about gravity and black holes. So, if you look into the quantum field theory, it does not talk about gravity and black holes, but if we put string theory into it and the idea we put there bas basically becomes more general in nature because it also tries to include gravity and black holes and of course, it is the study of conformal field theory and God symmetry. String theory provides a very new and very surprising method to understand aspects of quantum God's theory. So, 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 whatever ideas we have from string theory sometimes might uh, seem to be too much uh, uh, too much on the extrovert side, but uh, definitely uh, there is this is just a theory and definitely provides us with some surprising result which may be true may not be true. So, giving a relationship between a strongly coupled quantum field theory and the gravity in the higher dimension is what string theory is doing. So, that is all, uh, that is the final lecture and uh, I hope uh, this lecture series has helped you out to understand the theoretical aspects of unification of uh, forces. Uh, until next time, see you.